The third sentence is, make abundant offerings. Bodhisattva Samantabhadra did not practice giving, but he practiced making offerings. Ordinary Bodhisattvas, the same goes for ordinary people, to Buddhas, to Bodhisattvas, to elders, to make offerings, and to companions, to ordinary people, to give alms. In fact, giving and making offerings are one and the same thing, the mind is different, one is respectful, the other is not. Those who are not respectful are giving. Those who are respectful are making offerings. The reverent mind cannot meet the standard of Samantabhadra. It is still called almsgiving, it is not an offering, but it must meet the standard of Samantabhadra, sincere and reverent. Therefore, Samantabhadra's practice of giving to all sentient beings is like the state of reverence making offerings to the Buddhas. This is what we should learn. Especially when giving alms to servants, some poor people, we must not say. Come here, come here, I will give this to you. A contemptuous mind does not take people seriously. When our attitude can change, when we see poor people, even beggars. We practice almsgiving with the same reverence as we do offerings to Buddha, then you are cultivating extensive offerings. In the Avatamsaka Sutra, the topic of extensive cultivation and support is explained very thoroughly and can be explained a lot. Practicing generosity with the mind of Samantabhadra is to cultivate offerings extensively. Inside, the realm is vast, immeasurable and boundless. For the sake of convenience, the Buddha preached the immeasurable and boundless phenomena into three categories. Giving of wealth, giving of dharma, and giving of fearlessness. In offerings, financial offerings and in the financial and dharma. Samantabhadra Bodhisattva made a special comparison for us in practice and vows comparing the excellence of merit and virtue. He said, even if you use the seven treasures of the universe of 3000 great chiliocosm to give alms, this is simply not something ordinary people can do. Who can have such a great wealth, all cannot be compared with giving a dharma sentence. Samantabhadra Bodhisattva said so in the Flower Adornment Sutra. On the Vajrayana Sutra, Shakyamuni Buddha also said, giving the seven treasures of the universe of 3000 great chiliocosm to give alms. Merit is not as good as telling the listener four verses. You say four lines of Gatha for others, that is, any four lines in the Diamond Sutra, and you explain it to others, this merit surpasses that of the general wealth donation. Even the seven treasures donation in the universe of 3000 great chiliocosm. Is there really such a great merit? I don't believe it, not only I don't believe it, no one believes it. You see, in today's society, if you make some financial donations and do some charitable work, newspapers, magazines, and TV are all promoting it. When you go outside, there is no one who does not praise you. Don't say four lines of Gatha here, if you speak the whole Sutra, no one will know you. When you go out, nobody knows you, no one respects you. Who will think highly of you? What merits do you have, and what contribution do you make to this society? People in the world only look at the situation in front of them, and they don't see the cause and effect in the future, they don't see it. This matter, the Buddha is clear, the Buddha understands, and what the Buddha said is absolutely true, and there is nothing wrong with it. Why? The offering of the seven treasures in the universe of 3000 great chiliocosm, what all sentient beings have gained is to solve only a few difficulties in the immediate life for sentient beings. In other words, how they deserve to be reincarnated, they still have to be reincarnated like that, no matter how they deserve to be born and die.
They still have to be born and die like that. Not solving the problem, can only say solving a little problem in this present material life only. He has no place to live, so you build a house for him to live in. He has no food, so you feed him, and you only solve these difficulties for him. But when you hear four lines of Gatha, or even a line of Buddhist scriptures, you only hear one sentence. One touches the ear, and it will be the seed of Tao forever, and this merit will never be erased. The Buddha uses this Vajra seed, in your Alaya consciousness, even if you will not benefit in this life. If you encounter the Buddha Dharma in the next life, continue to practice and continue to achieve it, you will not benefit in the next life. And there will be future generations, even after countless kalpas. There will be a day when the predestined conditions are ripe. The seeds you hear the scriptures this time, you will surpass the three realms, surpass the ten dharma realms, and become a Buddha and a patriarch. This kind of merit and benefit is absolutely not comparable to that of the seven treasures of the three thousand great thousand worlds, and this is the reason. Where did the Buddha say something wrong? Buddha was right. Giving money is not as good as giving dharma. If we want to cultivate the most excellent merit, we must practice giving dharma.